Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's adventure in the van, we're heading out to do a couple of tasks. One thing, I have a new item that I want to mount in the back of the van, and I also need to build a cabinet to get that mounted. I also have a few other little projects I want to do. Probably break this up in one or two different videos, project specific. So, I'm in the van right now, got it warmed up downtown in the city, got to get out of the city, head down to Bedford, Nova Scotia, because there's something that is in stock down there and not at the current store that I'm at. So, got to make a little bit of a drive there, but we'll stop and get coffee and get what we need to get, and then head out to a basically a, a kind of a woods location a little bit of privacy because i'm going to be doing some woodworking and i'd like to open up the van and be able to do that so let's get after it Just pulling into this gas station really quick. Need to gas up before I get on the highway and make sure I've got everything ready for the day. I do need to stop at a home hardware at some point to grab some hardware to do some woodwork and pick up a new tool really cheap. Uh, I did an online search. I do have it in stock at the nearby store, so we'll grab that on the way as well. And uh, yeah, basically just gonna drive out of the city, camera down, cause there's a lot of traffic out here and I don't wanna get in an accident. So let's just get some gas and then get out of here. Okay guys, I have got all the running around done that I needed to get done, all the stores and everything. I uh, just pulled off in a um, kind of an off highway rest area and there's a lot going on right now in the van so we've got to get configured for a few things. I did manage to pick up both a butane stove which I need for a cooktop inside, something that's really quick and simple. So I'm not always using my Trangia. Got a couple bottles of this butane and I don't know where I put the rest of the stuff, but I did get a battery powered jigsaw, which I'm gonna need for cutting some of the wood to build a cabinet, as well as the vinyl for doing these walls. So today's gonna be the first day where I actually pull this whole foam piece out since putting in the LED light strips. If you guys haven't seen that video, go and check it out it's right before this video. And uh, yeah, so let's just get started. I gotta get the diesel heater bumped on. It is very cold outside. It's coming down to about negative three right now. And uh, there's snow, so there's flurries in the air and we got a big old snowstorm coming in. So I've got to get this stuff finished and finalized so I can live in the snowstorm. <laughs> so I also picked up a microwave. So, I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, geez, why do you have a microwave? That doesn't make any sense. Well, being inside of the van all the time, especially in rain or snow, to get out a propane stove or a butane stove, such as this one, um, sometimes it's not really needed to crank on butane to spark it up, make fire just to heat up a coffee or to like reheat rice and dirty a pot and get it all sticky and burnt on there. It's just not needed. The microwave that I have, we'll talk more about this in closer detail, it's very small and it's only 700 watts. So to bump it on for like 60 seconds to microwave like rice, like leftovers, uh, hamburger. So the other day I had wraps, I made burger and rice mixture. I had to get out the Trangia out here and fire it up, a whole process. 
of like get out the alcohol, fill it up, light it, dirty the dish, dirty the pot, just just a huge mess. So the microwave, bump on the inverter, bam, stick it in there, 60 seconds, done. No cleanup, very, very simple. I've got enough power inside of this van to run that, no problem, so why not treat myself? So I'm gonna get comfortable in here and we're gonna get started on some of these renovations. All right, so I just flicked on the diesel heater. That's gonna crank on and blow some nice hot air in here because we are gonna be opening the door in and out. I've got wood to cut. I've got a whole cabinet here to build. But the first thing is going to be, let's get Boomer sweater out of the way here. The first thing is gonna be to remove these curtains because I don't feel the need for a curtain on the side. I think it's a little silly. I've got the foam there. The windows are tinted. I really don't care if people look in. Uh, so let's just do the deed, right? That pretty much takes care of that. We'll toss that in the garbage, clean up these broken plastic pieces, and uh, yeah, we'll get rid of these little plastic guys uh, with some pliers, we'll have to break those off, the ones that didn't break off. So this foam piece, as I mentioned in an earlier video, that is going to actually stay there. Um, I am gonna be recovering this with the vinyl so it matches the rest of the van, but right here, is where I'm thinking of building a cabinet because I've got this pull out drawer here which is full of miscellaneous right now and there's already a an extension cord running from the inverter all the way behind this counter for AC power so I was going to bump on the inverter and use the microwave the plugs already there I'm also thinking that when I build this cabinet this will be a perfect spot for my PC my computer for editing videos I can put the tower in here and then a little bit of camera gear right next to it, my small camera bag, and basically be able to store that in there in a neat fashion, and hopefully everything will work out. So I'm gonna get the microwave open and bring it over here, make sure it fits the way I want it to, and I've got a bunch of scrap wood underneath the bed left over from the build. I'm gonna get some of that out, take some measurements, see what we can cobble together. All right. Let's get this drawer system open. I've got a pair of scissors or a knife out of here. So I went with a Hamilton Beach 0.7 cubic foot capacity microwave. Extremely affordable. And it is 700 watts. So my system will run this no problem. I don't need anything apartment or home size. And uh, yeah, basically I think this will suit my needs of just heating things up. So let's get this out of here. Hopefully they'll make it a mess. I can see styrofoam already in here. Styrofoam is like a van lifer's nightmare. The stuff goes everywhere. Uh, Boomer's back here on the bed behind me, by the way, guys. He's kind of tucked in there looking for the, the heat from the diesel heater. I know he is. He's just waiting for it to build. Oh, not a lot of room in here. All right, pull this out of here. I can honestly say I've never unboxed a microwave in a van before. All right, so I went with the black model. They had it in white and I believe red. I went with black just because it's uh, aesthetically pleasing. Kind of tuck it in a corner and forget about it. Clean all that up in a little bit. Uh, as far as the garbage goes, what I've been doing is just smashing everything down and going to a gas station whenever I gas up and just tossing it in the garbage. Seems to be working for me. Uh, scissors. I did reconfigure these drawers too, by the way, guys. So if you guys caught the last video, you'll notice that it looks different. So I'm going to leave the tray and the trivet and stuff in there for now. All I need to know is how big is this? It is on rubber feet as well, so that's nice. So. Let's see if it fits over there. All right. Oh, that fits perfect. It even fits down low. Like it literally fits in this little cabinet area, which is exactly what I was hoping for. So I'm going to be mounting it up here, probably extending this countertop. I, I need to look at the scrap wood that I have kicking around in the back of the van because I'm not sure if I want to bring it up higher and then do like a little step and then I could do two shelves in here, which seems to be the smartest 
way to go about doing this because if I just extend this countertop two things one the counter is going to look different from the original and two I'm going to lose that vertical space above the microwave so what I'm trying to say is if I put the microwave here sure I've got room to put things on top of the microwave but I lose built-in room for cupboards if I put the microwave up here that gains me a very large cabinet to uh, to build other shelves and doors and things so I think that's going to be the ticket right there. I'll get a measurement to see how high I can go. And uh, like I said, just dig in the back of the van, see what I've got for wood, get in here, take some measurements, and uh, basically get something put together. It is getting windy out there and quite cold. Boomer's freezing with that door open. <laughs> He's just shivering and shaking. The heater is on. <coughs> He's just being a baby right now. Put him down there by the heater vent. Man, that thing is so warm. So looking in my little storage area, I've got these hardwood pallet boards, which are basically gonna be like the face. And I've got some of these one by twos, I guess they are, for framing. And a couple other pieces back there, a whole bunch of stuff to choose from, but I'm gonna be looking at these one by twos right now because I need to build up a frame. And those look like they're definitely gonna be long enough. So I've got four of those, which is needed. And I'm gonna be working with, uh, I've bought some drywall screws, inch and a quarter. The reason why I went with drywall screws is because a lot of this board is really thin, so I don't need long screws. And those drywall screws, they just sink in really good. They bite and they just work really well, so. I gotta get some tools out, measuring tape. I'm not even sure where I put that. I'm thinking, oh, and I have to do a little bit of work down here as well, because I put a tray down there to basically organize all my things and it's moving around. So I need to put a little strip of wood there so it can't move. So I guess it's time to find some tools. I bought a little toolbox and I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's right here, right here on the bed. Perfect. So in here, I just have like tiny household tools all the bigger tools are underneath the bed but this is just the stuff that i need to like quickly grab and uh, and access so we'll use that and that should be it for now all right so i've also got my <laughs> boomers jumping on the bed now uh, i've also got my dewalt drill kit that i keep up here these batteries are fully charged um, one thing I do need to check though, or I should start on, is this jigsaw that I just picked up is battery operated. I'm gonna bet the battery's dead. So let's get this on charge really quick. 20 volt lithium ion, so pretty awesome. Picked this up at Walmart for pretty cheap actually. Garbage, my garbage can is full again. I was doing electrical work and stuff in here cooking, eating, living, you know, all that fun stuff. And I gassed up today and I forgot to put the garbage in the garbage can. So, nice cordless jigsaw there. That is everything in there. I also bought a pack of blades because I assumed it didn't come with blades. So, or you know what, actually, oh, it did. It did come with a few blades. I can feel them right here in the paper. So there's one, you just loosely put in there. Other paperwork. Is that just one single blade? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, so it comes with one singular blade. Interesting. At least it's a pretty decently aggressive blade for wood, so that'll work great. Toss this behind the seat for now. Deal with that later. Shut the door. Uh, oh, I'm going to put that... I'm going to charge this on the Jackery. I've got the Jackery in the front seat right now. 
there's no indicator on this to tell me how much juice is in it so multi-speed as well yeah so dying right away on high speed yeah so let's get this on the charger right now and by the time we need it hopefully there'll be some juice in it so yeah like i said i got the refrigerator here plugged in right now i should bump that up because it is a little cold and the jackery on the front seat i'm just going to reach over plug this into the ac plug that in and we are charging very simple so what i've been doing is basically piggybacking from onboard power to jackery the jackery is almost due for a charge so that's the reason why i'm using it right now to kind of deplete it the inside is fully charged, but I am running the lights and the diesel heater off that right now. So, yeah. Grabbing these pieces of wood, they definitely fit. So that'll work really great there. I might not even have to cut them, to be honest. <laughs> That's too funny. I don't have to cut them. That is actually right where I need it to be. So I guess we'll make sure that they're all the same length. That would be ideal. And it looks like they are yeah those were already cut they're already the right length so we're winning already so I'm gonna have to go on the back side to screw through this into these but as far as putting them here I could just screw right into the existing cabinetry take some measurements making sure that the boards for the fascia will fit on there and then we'll do some boards this way and then we'll have to get some blue wash and stuff and try to mimic uh, what's going on here so everything matches nicely but whew, we're getting warm in here let's get to work man it's getting warm in here quickly Okay, so one thing I'm just realizing right now, <laughs> I didn't plan on using that thick material, but those inch and a quarter screws are definitely not going to make it through in a good way. I'm going to have to really sink them in there, hopefully not splitting the wood, but the other boards will work totally fine. So I'm going to shut that door, basically block it out. Uh, we're super warm in here right now. I don't even know if, yeah, I don't even need that light on. Perfect, we got enough sunlight coming in here. I see you on power. So yeah, I'm just gonna start banging in some uh, of these studs, get a good look at it, make sure everything's set right and strong. And uh, whenever I do things like this, honestly, it's a custom project, it's custom fit. These things just kind of build themselves. So once you start cutting and putting pieces of wood here and there, then it'll come to your, your mind and you'll be like, oh, this works here, that doesn't work. Uh, so it's just kind of trial and error and kind of do what uh, whatever works. There are a lot of people out here. There's helicopters, there's trucks, there's cars. They're right on the side of a highway. So it's kind of unique, uh, just building in plain sight. So let's get to work. these kind of look like paint stir sticks but they're not they're just cut really thin um, this one does have the magnetic catch on it right there for this drawer so I'm gonna have to mount this back on but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace these little slats with actual pallet boards because this is gonna be the top shelf for the first compartment for a computer or whatever else I put in there so rip those out or replace this little magnetic strip so I'll take that off right now so I don't lose it and we'll be good to go I should mention I used to actually work at a lot of carpentry um, so doing this stuff 
become second nature. I've also built probably six or seven camper vehicles, both trucks, vans, buses. So certainly nothing new. Um, anyone who's getting into this, I say just, just get into it, just do it. Trust me, it'll figure itself out while you're building it. All right, so I'm gonna take this window covering off. This one's put in fairly tight so it doesn't fall out. Oh man, that's really in there. There. <laughs> going up so high. Uh, so just going in the back of the van to grab, oh man, that's in there tight. To grab a few more pieces of wood and uh, I think we've got what we need right now. That lets in a ton more light. I believe I got these dowels mixed up. They're not exactly the same length. Yeah, so this one goes in the bottom. Not the top. There. So I put those dowels back in every time I'm in. That way they've got a, a spot to hang. Put this foam up front out of our way. Okay, so I've got all the wood in here. Now I can take inventory of what I have and uh, basically go from there and salvage what I need. I am going to need some long pieces like this, full length, um, to do the faces. So I'm going to work with the shorter pieces first, that way I'm not wasting my materials. So it looks like we're pretty snug to 18 inches. I'm actually going to cut it a little bit short because working on a jigsaw, you can't really shave wood like you can with a chop saw. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut it just a little shy. Uh, but 18 inches is what we'll call that. So we're going to get two, four, looks like six. Or probably four actually. Four boards cut to that. Make this top piece first and then we can build off of that. Space here. Let's open the second door. Ugh. All right. Okay. So after looking at the battery, I openly admit that I'm an idiot. Shocker, right? Um, so the charging display on that battery charger. Um, there's four different kinds of lights. There's a solid red, flashing red, solid green, flashing green. Um, it was flashing red. I didn't read it, so I figured that was charging. Apparently, that's not charging. The flashing green is charging. It looked like it was solid green when I glanced up there. So anyways, long story short, I screwed up. So these will definitely work. Um, I'm looking at one, two, three, four. I'm going to need another board because the width of this is three and a half and we are three and a half three and a half three and a half yeah so one more board um so i'll take that off another one on the bed because i'm looking at this style of power wood and this doesn't actually match this so it's only off by like a bit but i'm looking at one right now on the bed there is another identical board so that'll do the bottom um i am getting a little bit worried about the face of it but it's going to be open 
it's literally an open cubby that uh, I don't have to close off of the door. I may even put a cargo net on it just in case. I mean, the computer, it, when the computer goes in there, it's going to be strapped down. So it's not, it's not going to move. But I may put a cargo net there just in case I put anything in there and I go over bump, whatever. But like I said, we'll figure it out as we get there. But right now, that's got to charge. This is going to get cut, get in there. So I'm just going to fast forward, do a lot of stuff off camera, and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so I did get one board cut with a limited battery life that is on there and uh, dropping my screw and just marked out where this needs to go. This board's going to drop in there like that. This got to get screwed underneath so that'll line up nice and flush. Um, I'm not going to do a flush mount or maybe, yeah, I will. I'll do it flush because this little lip here works as a, as a pull. So I'm just going to mount it on there flush like it was before and that'll be the magnet catch at least installed there. And then once the battery's charged, I'll be able to cut some more wood, get them in here. But this gives me a good starting point to then start measuring off of this to go up and do the risers and then build the top piece. This screw is so fiddly, there's no room in this plastic receptacle to even hold it. <laughs> the way they design some things these days is just, oh man, ridiculous. Like I can't even push in on it to get it in the wood because there's no room to hold the screw. We'll plunge with the bit to see if that helps it get started. And of course I'm screwing into hard pallet wood, so that doesn't make anything easier for the screw. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So that lines up exactly where I wanted it to. So I was going to pre-drill those, but I actually entered in some of these existing holes from the nails on this end. Didn't split the board there, so that gives me a nice solid magnet catch right there. This little lip here to grab the drawer to open it. Now we'll just continue that all the way back. All right, so I've got some more boards cut. I've got the, all the boards on the bottom screwed in, and I found the, uh, the extension cord back here that actually goes to the inverter. It is about two inches too short on the inverter side, so I'm actually going to have to buy like a three foot extension cord just to make up two inches. But that's fine, it'll work no problem. So what I've got going on right now is just mocking up the height. I just put the microwave up here and it fits perfectly. So now I've got to basically get these screwed in. I've got to go to the front seat and screw through this wall into that stud. And I'm going to pre-drill these so the screw head can actually go down in through because the screws are too short. And I don't really feel like going to a hardware store for something so simple. This is all going to be box framed the way it's going to be set in there. So it's going to hold itself in there no problem. So I've already got four of those done. Basically get these screwed in and then start doing the top and uh, sheet it all in. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to put a couple pilot holes through the 2x4, through the 1x2 stud, going through the wall into the driver's seat essentially. And that way I will know where to go on the other side and put the screws through. So I'm going to pop in a couple holes there, get that all mocked up, and then I'll be able to go in the front, put the screws in, carry on, and uh, hopefully this will work out really well.
All right, so with that drilled, I can now go on the other side. I'm going to have to butt a piece of wood up against this because there's no one else here to hold it. So I've got to screw in from the other side of the wall, but I need something pushing that board into the wall. Um, and then once I get the first one on, it won't be any problem to do the second one. It is actually raining and starting to snow outside with flurries. We're expecting a big snowstorm tomorrow. So hopefully this weather holds off while I'm in, in and out of the van and we can get this installed. All right, so I just pre-sunk some of these holes here so these heads of the screw can actually go down quite a ways because these screws are not long enough to make it through the board. So now they will go way down in there and penetrate into the side cabinet. So I've got one, two, three. I don't know if that's useful for anybody, but uh, if you have screws that aren't long enough, this is definitely a good way to get them in there and still continue working. So I found while I was doing this that my ratcheting driver being a lot smaller was able to get in behind the seat. So that's what I'm using right now. If you hear that skipping sound like I'm uh, destroying my drill bit, I'm actually not. It's just the ratcheting effect in the uh, in the driver. I'm looking for a scrap piece of wood that I just had a minute ago because I need it for the thickness. I guess that's the same thickness. So running this right out to the edge pretty much. Um, that's going to give me a nice little face board there. I just want to make sure that that's continuing the same all the way up. And that'll tell me whether that's square or not. Looks good right there. This popped in here on the top to hold it in position. Okay, that one's in, screws. All right, so that is in the cabinet. Might have to add another screw to the actual cabinet itself because it looks like it's taking a bit of a toll. Bumpy road. So you guys can see there's three in there right now. Just to show you what's going on, this is going to go up here. Get that all figured out. And then again, back here and then sheet in the whole side of it to kind of build that effect. And then whatever happens inside, <coughs> um, will be for inside. We'll get to that point when we get there. All right guys, as you can see, I've got the framework done and situated. I have some of this wood that was left over from the previous owner and he basically used it to do all the framing of these cabinets which is really smart. And I'm going to assume that these were slats out of a crib for a baby because that's what they look like. So I'm going to cap off the face of this with one of those. However, I don't have any finish nails to hammer that in there. I don't want to put a screw in it because it'll look really ugly and it'll split it. But what I'm going to do is it's actually the same thickness as this one by material. So I'm going to face this entire face and the bottom with the slat material. But right now what I'm doing is just cutting these boards for the top. And this is also going to go up here to cap that off when we're all finished because there'll be one piece here as well. And I'm also going to use this for inside whatever shelving I'm going to be doing if I come up with shelving. Right now it's just going to be a big open compartment for whatever I need to get in there until I can actually get a measurement of my computer and things that I really do want to keep in there permanently. And then I'll go ahead and order some drawer slides and put those in there and then build an actual drawer if needed. So right now I'm going to cut the rest of these boards. I'm just checking to make sure everything's square all the way back and it is. So I can go ahead and cut these and then once that's done, I know the thickness of this board here. So I'll be able to cut the side piece and get that all boxed in and get the microwave put up there. All right guys, so I've got the rough work roughed out. <laughs> uh, it does look pretty janky right now, but keep in mind the trim and stuff's not on there. I'm working with this pallet wood that is just warped and twisted and cupped and curled. So I'm trying to get it as lined up as I can, but a lot of the stuff's just wonky. 
So keep in mind this trim piece that we're going to be using is going to go around and cap off a lot of these edges as well as the bottom and I'm going to be using it for the inside for figuring out where I want a drawer later in time. Uh, I'm going to leave the back open right now. I think Boomer just shut the door. I'm going to leave the back area open. Push that open. Uh, just for now so I can figure out how cords are going to go in and out because if I do have my computer back here I'm going to need room to get in and out with some wires so I did not contour that edge up against the foam and I'm also going to be putting graphics on the foam so right now the microwave is in a really good spot to use which is what I was looking for so I'm going to go to the store get some finished nails to get this stuff tacked in there and then it'll basically be ready for paint on the exterior and some of these edges and keep on going from there figuring out what I need and how it's going to look in the final result but I think this is as far as I'm going to go for this video next video hopefully this will be finished up and you guys will be able to see it with all the trim work put in there and uh, yeah so that is my project for the day it is getting very windy out I've got to get the van cleaned up it's trashed right now I got to get everything swept out of here and uh, yeah basically start cooking some supper and enjoy some food and find a home to call a spot to call home for the night i'm all over the place i've been looking at the van i got a million things to do right now so yeah i've got to get all this stuff cleaned up and uh, if you have any questions go ahead drop it down in the comment section this is my day project i'm not done today i'm going to keep on going but that's all i'm going to film so peace out guys and i'll see you in the next episode